This film is about how a small group of the most brilliant minds unraveled our old cozy certainties about maths and the universe. You had these ideas and, and you had to be very careful because any moment they would bite you. They sounded great, but they were very dangerous. It is also about how once they had looked at these problems, they could not look away and pursued the questions to the brink of insanity and then over it to madness and suicide. Today, we still stand only on the threshold of the world they saw. Our story starts here, at the town's university, with a mathematics professor, a man called Georg Cantor. Well, Cantor is one of the greatest mathematicians of the world. Where previously infinity had just been a vague number without end, Cantor saw a whole new world opening up. If all that Cantor had seen was mathematics, then his story would be of limited interest. But from the beginning, Cantor realized his work had far wider significance. He believed it could take the human mind towards greater, transcendent truth and certainty. The sheer audacity of Cantor's ideas had thrown open the doors and changed mathematics forever. It seemed Cantor had opened maths to the very thing it was supposed to save us from, irresolvable uncertainty. Cantor knew the only way to convince his critics was to make his theory complete. Could he show there was a logic to his infinities? No matter how isolated he became, the more he was opposed, the more he struggled. Where another person might have given up, Cantor didn't. By 1884, Cantor has been working solidly on the continuum hypothesis for over two years. At the same time, the personal and professional attacks on him have become more and more extreme. In fact, he writes to a friend saying he's not sure he can take them anymore. And indeed, he can't. By May of that year, he has a massive nervous breakdown. Eventually, he's brought here to the Nerfen Clinic in Halle, which is an asylum. Cantor never fully recovered. For the rest of his life, he would be drawn back to work on the problem he could not solve. And each time, it would hurt him, profoundly. This is the only bust there is of Georg Cantor. It was made just one year before he died, and he died utterly alone in an insane asylum. 